What is going on guys? This is Gaines Gaming. Today we are talking about the arms training event. It's been a minute since we've updated this video and so we are going to be walking you guys through the new arms training event in 2024 showing you how to get the best rewards possible and get to the top of the rankings so that way you can get the 20 gold heads at the end of the event. Now just to refresh you guys on the arms training event, you cannot heal during this event. So if you have a commander that does healing, it will not heal. And so you do have to be mindful of what commanders you are going to be using. The commanders I really enjoy using are going to be ones that have instant proc damage. So personally, one of my favorite pairings for this event is actually Charles Martel and Alexander the Great. Now, this is because Charles Martel has the shielding factor and Alexander the Great has the instant proc damage. A couple other ones that I like using are going to be Scipio Prime, obviously. And there is an argument that you could also use high DPS commanders like Nevsky, like Joan Prime, like Luce. But personally, I really like using ones that have shielding factor because yes, if you can do more damage, that's awesome. But if you can reduce the damage that you're taking, that's honestly better in this event because it really matters how much damage you are taking rather than how much damage you are doing. So you kind of want to have a commander that is going to be shielding you and also a commander that is going to be doing a ton of damage that is why i like using commanders that have shielding factor so infantry is going to be my primary choice for this event so i'm going to be running Scipio prime and alexander the great so that we have the shielding factor as well as the instant proc damage from alexander the great with a good amount of damage output from Scipio prime so we are going to go ahead and put our best gear on Scipio. you definitely want to make sure you are doing that because obviously you want to have the best gear possible Another thing you need to do if you are going to try to win this event is use a 50% expansion. Now, this is vital because if you are not using a 50% expansion, somebody else will and they will beat you because of it. Personally, I know I'm not going to take first place in this time because I am not max tech. We have other players that are max tech that will beat me. So I'm not going to waste the 50%. I'm going to go for 25% because I want to finish in the top 10. That's my goal for this time around because... I'm just being realistic. I think top 10, I can definitely hit, but number one, definitely not. If I was max tech, for sure, I, I think I would be able to win easily, but we are gonna go for the basic army expansion for that reason. So one thing that I do need to do here is since I am pretty close to being off the territory, I don't want the low hard to spawn over here because I wanna make sure I'm on territory the entire time. So I'm actually going to pretty much waste a teleport to teleport a little bit more on the territory. So that way, when I do spawn a little har, it will spawn on territory every single time. Otherwise, you are risking that you are going to spawn off territory and lose your territory bonus. Now, a couple other things we want to make sure we do. We already have our expansion popped. We have a 5% troop defense as well. And I did also go and grab a rune. So I have a 7% attack and 7% defense rune as well. So you want to make sure you also get a rune making sure you have the right kind of city skin on. I have Twilight Falls, so that way I'm getting an additional 5% skill damage. I am losing 10% infantry attack though, which does kind of suck. But we'll take a look at the gear that we have on our Scipio. So this is the equipment I have on my Scipio Prime. One thing though that I am going to do, you might notice that I do have a tier three Horn of Fury on this one, so I am getting an additional unit capacity, and I only have a tier one for this ring. However, I did just get enough materials for my other ring to go to tier three. So we are actually going to go ahead and awaken this to tier three to get an additional one and a half percent unit capacity. So we're going to go ahead and quick awaken this. Feels like such a waste, but it is going to be very nice to use in the field. And then we are going to go ahead and put that onto my Scipio Prime, even though, yes, it is going to be for cavalry. I will still get the unit capacity bonus. I just won't get the extra since it is crit for calves. So now we have that done. And so now we are going to go ahead and start the low hard training. So you do have to start with normal and then go into legend after finishing the normal. And once you do this, you can activate your skills. And these are the first skills that are going to pop up. And we are going to start with this skill right here, ancestral protection. This is whenever attacked, Lohar has a 10% chance to gain a shield, damage factor 800, for 5 seconds. While the shield is active, Lohar's troop deal an extra 20% normal attack damage. So we'll go ahead and activate that. We're going to go ahead and challenge, so you can see, right on territory. And we are going to take our troops out. So we are going to go Scipio Prime with our Alexander the Great. 
we are able to do 325,000 T5 units. I'm gonna go ahead and march those out. So now you are no longer able to go back to your city once you start the event. Once again, you cannot heal either once you start the event. So one thing you wanna to try to do is get the instant proc damage. That's why using Alexander the Great is so nice. And one thing that I should have taken advantage of there is with Alexander the Great, since he is instant proc damage, if you have the ability to hit the target while it is moving, it's not going to turn around and hit you right away because it's going to still be walking. So right here, I can go ahead and hit it and it does not turn to hit immediately. Sometimes you can get lucky and actually get an instant proc like immediately right when you start hitting it, which is fantastic when that happens because basically it's, you know, basically taking damage without doing any damage to you like right there. Like I was able to get two or three hits before it even turned to hit me. So that's one strategy that I like using in this event that just makes it really easy to allow you to get hits in without taking damage. So using that to your advantage is going to be huge for getting better scores. And that's why the instant proc damage is so good right there because literally killed it in like two seconds. And one thing that I forgot to mention that you can actually buff your march while you're doing it. If you have, you know, a farm account next to you that you can you know, use like Trajan or Joan of Arc or Mulan, any of these commanders that will buff your troops and just be hitting a barbarian or hitting an enemy, you know, a farm account, a friend, whatever, to buff your march, you can do that. And if you're very serious about taking first place and you like you need those 20 gold heads, then yes, I'd recommend doing that. But personally, I don't do that just because I feel like that's a little excessive for what I'm willing to do for this event. But let's go ahead and add our second skill. So the second skill we're going to add is going to be Thrill of Battle. So every 10 seconds in battle, Lohar's troop will increase their attack and defense by 10% up to 100%. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And we will continue our challenge. So once again, I do like waiting for it to start walking before hitting it. It might take you like an additional 5 to 10 seconds per attack, but I think it does add up because, you know, the purpose of this event is to basically finish with the most amount of troops remaining. So that's why I like people that are max tech that have way more troops, way more troop capacity than other people, they are going to obviously score better because they're naturally going to have more troops left at the end. And on top of that, people that use the 50% expansions will also do much better for that same exact reason. So we'll go ahead and finish this as well. So we'll make it a little bit tougher since we got <laughs> Fiend over here doing his Kahars, but that's right. As long as we are spawning on territory, that's all that really matters for this event. And as you can see here, like the first ones definitely go by much faster than the other ones. But the, I mean, the goal is to finish them as fast as humanly possible, because if you are taking too long, you're obviously taking more damage. So you want to make sure you're doing this as fast as you can. The third skill we are going to be doing is Will of Battle. During the battle, when his troops are reduced to 50%, after 10 seconds, it immediately heals to 30 troops units. So that means you have to kill the Lohar within 10 seconds, otherwise he's going to heal up to 30%. So if you have him at 1% health remaining, after 10 seconds, he will heal immediately to 30%, which at the end of this, it makes a huge difference. So if you are not hitting them and killing him fast enough, this will come back to bite you. So that's why like some people like to wait on this skill, but personally, I think if you're using a commander that has instant proc damage, I don't think it really matters all too much because you're going to be killing it within 10 seconds. Even at the end, I think you'll be killing it within 10 seconds just because of that skill of you know having instant proc damage. I think that makes a big enough difference to not really worry about that skill as much. But I know some people are a little bit more skeptical about that skill and being like, well, I, I just don't want it to heal. And I understand that, but if you're using the right commanders and have the right kind of pairings, I think that's totally fine. The fourth skill is going to be no retreat. When Lohar's troop strength is lower than 50%, his troops deal an extra 20% normal attack damage and 20% counter attack damage, and they also take 20% less skill damage. So basically just making him tankier toward the end. So one thing that's always annoying is when it goes on the other side of your city, just back and forth and back and forth. And one thing I just realized now that I forgot to do is activate War Frenzy. That is a very important aspect that I completely overlooked because you are increasing your damage by 3%. So just finding something to scout and just return your scout home or scout them, whatever. But getting that extra, you know, 3% does add up, especially toward the end. So I did forget to do that. So I it will affect me a little bit, not a ton, but toward the end, you definitely want to have 
that extra 3% damage because that does add up a ton. So make sure you do have War Frenzy as well. All right, and the fifth skill is going to be Wild Rage. It's another passive skill. Attacks have a 10% chance to deal an extra damage once, 1000 damage factor, and silence a target for three seconds. So this one does always hurt if it does hit you, but this is why I use a commander with instant proc damage because instant proc damage is not going to be silenced. You're silencing the active skill. So you can still get the instant proc damage from Alexander the Great, which is why I always recommend using someone with that instant proc damage. So now it's getting a little bit tricky because it is going a little bit off territory. So I just want to make sure my troops are still on territory in this situation. I don't want it to, you know, go further and further toward the mountains because then I would not get the bonus of being on territory. So you want to make sure you're careful if you are here. If you want to make it really easy on yourself, teleport into like the middle of your territory. Like these guys have no worry whatsoever to potentially be off territory. But like me, Fiend, and Luffy, all of us are kind of at risk of being off territory at some point if we're not careful. The sixth skill is going to be Malignant Venom. I believe that's how you say that. Lohar's troops add a stack of poison with each attack, lasting 10 seconds and stacking up to 30 times. Duration is refreshed when a stack is added. Each stack increases damage taken from all sources by 1%. This is a kind of a crazy skill that, you know, if you're in battle for too long, this can definitely come back to haunt you. So that's why this one is a little bit later on. You don't want this like right away. But like I said, like I've said before, like you should be killing it fast enough where you're not really taking a ton of damage from these skills. Because, I mean, realistically, you're not going to be in battle for 30 seconds. Like unless maybe you're using T1 and you're in, you know, KVK1. But I mean, if if you are in Season of Conquest, the battle should not be taking more than 10 seconds at the very most. If they are taking more than that, then you might you might be worrying a little bit on how well you can actually do in this event. You might need to rethink the commander choices, uh, the equipment that you're using, and you know making sure you're actually following the correct order here. All right, the seventh skill is going to be Armor of Thorns. Increases defense of all troops led by Lohar by 10% and increases counterattack damage by 75%, which is quite a bit, but that's all right. That should be perfectly fine. And, you know, obviously, like I said before, waiting for them to start walking is the absolute best time to start hitting because you get a couple of free shots in while you're just taking counterattack damage and not normal attack damage, which definitely does add up over time. Like right there, I got like a good, like what, like three hits before it actually turned and started hitting me. It's kind of like hitting somebody when they're running away from you where you can get, you know, like your, your skills going off and they don't have their skills going off where you can do way more damage because they're not hitting you back, essentially. Um, it's obviously the best way to do it. The A skill will be Iron Resolve. Troops led by Lohar have a 100% chance to gain 200 Rage whenever attacked, and troops led by you will also gain 50 Rage. So this one actually isn't horrible. I mean, you are giving, you know, Lohar more Rage, but you're also giving yourself more Rage. So, you know, you're going to be going faster with your Rage, but <laughs> your instant proc damage is going to be taking care of it anyway, right? So you don't really have to worry too much because you might actually kill the Lohar before it even gets a skill cycle off, which is kind of crazy. And that's also why you want, you know, someone like Scipio primary, because you're going to be doing a ton of damage. And like once your active skill goes off, that thing is dead. The next skill will be Surging Strike. When you're using skills, Lohar immediately recovers 100 Rage and increases normal attack damage by 100% for 3 seconds. This might actually make him over Rage at times. I love how you can't really see here, but... Got that instant proc damage immediately, which always helps. <laughs> it's always just crazy how much damage your Alex can do. And honestly, like there, there could be some, uh, you know, speculation that I should not be using Twilight Falls because I'm losing, you know, infantry attack. But I think with the rune that I have of getting the extra seven percent attack, plus you know having, um, you know, infantry and having the skill damage, I think that definitely outweighs. The, the net negative I get from losing the attack. But, um, you know, there is something to say that you could go for stats instead of like 10% infantry health if you have it or 5%, whatever that might look like. But personally, I like the, the active skill damage better. And obviously the last skill is going to be Strike of Vengeance. When attacking another troop, Lohar's troop has a 10% chance to deal 500% extra normal attack damage. Whenever it takes skill damage, his troop deals 300% normal attack damage to its current target. That is why you want that one last, because this skill is absolutely insane. So we will finish up this last round, and then we go on to the Legend mode, which is relatively new. 
I have not covered um, Alohar events with the legend mode yet. Uh, my older video is one of my most popular videos. That's why I'm remaking it here with the fully updated 2024 guide because, you know, it's it's pretty outdated. It's like from 2022. Uh, and, you know, basically is relatively the same, but just does not include legendary mode or the legend mode. So I wanted to make sure I, I redid it and included the legend mode so that way, you know, people can watch it in 2024 and know exactly what to do. So now we are at the full 300,000 points. And this is typically before legend mode where it would take how many troops you have remaining and then give you bonus points for how many troops you have left. And so now we have the legend mode, which is essentially the same thing. Um, but basically you fight legend mode where whatever troops you have remaining after legend mode will dictate what score you have on top of that 300,000 total points from the normal attacks. So with legend, two more skills are added. So first one, broken will shatters the morale of your troops. For every 20% units your troops lose, the damage to take increases by 15%. So as you lose troops, you actually take more damage, which is kind of crazy. And then Vicious is a passive skill. Increases enemy troop health by 30% and damage by 10%. Plus you have all the other skills that you were just choosing beforehand all added up on top of each other. Plus you have Shield of Protection, which is damage taken from archers is reduced by 20%. And you also have Two to the Death, which is that healing and reinforcements are disabled. So you definitely don't want to be using archers in this event. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but don't use archers. If you've already made it this far in this video, using archers, you should redo it using infantry or cavalry because that's obviously going to be much better. Um, you know, using someone with instant proc damage like Alexander the Great is why I choose infantry for this event. So now we're going to go ahead and activate this and go ahead and challenge. And so now we are on the final one here. He is getting very close to being off territory for me. So I might wait a little bit for him to move a little bit more toward me. So that way I guarantee I am on territory the entire fight because this is the absolute worst one to not be on territory for because it's the strongest one out of all of them and the most important out of the entire event. And now he is moving even further off territory. So I might just have to wait a little bit. I got a solid six hours before he refreshes. So, you know, I might, I'll just wait until he gets back on territory. There we go. Finally, I've literally been waiting for like a good five minutes trying to get this thing on territory. This has been so frustrating. <laughs> All right, so we will finish this one up. This one obviously taking much longer than the other ones, as you can see. And there is the heal up to 30% that you want to try to avoid. That unfortunately I was very close to avoiding but unable to do so. So now we go ahead and we challenge number two. Finally on territory immediately. That's what we like to see. So now I'm gonna wait until he starts marching again so that way I can get the first initial attack without him hitting me back hopefully. <laughs> we'll see what we can do here and hopefully we can kill this thing within 10 seconds so that way we avoid that extra healing factor that he gets. We just need some instant proc damages here because that's what we are missing right now. My goodness, no instant procs. Because if you get instant procs, it doesn't really matter because you're going to kill it right away. But if you don't get the instant proc, that definitely sucks. That's like the one thing is that it is completely variable how well you're going to do based off the instant proc from Alexander the Great. If you don't get one, then, I mean, it's going to be really hard for it to do very well. Hopefully we can get, there we go. We did not get the extra uh, healing factor there. So now we get 330,000 points from defeating the Lohar, and then an additional 8,325 points for our troops remaining. We had 270,590 troops remaining in our unit. So now let's go ahead and see. And sure enough, we are in first place. We'll go ahead and collect all these rewards, which is awesome. So we will see how long this holds in first place. I Like I said, I'm not really shooting for first. I'm shooting for top 10 in this event simply because I'm not max tech and I don't expect to take first place for that exact reason because I just don't have the, you know, the troop capacity or the all damage bonus that the whales are going to have. I mean, some of these guys have this <laughs> almost maxed out already. So I definitely don't have that ability to, to do that. Um, you know, other people might be uh, buffing their marches as well with, like I said, Joan, Trajan, um, Mulan, any of those marches that will buff your march. Um, people do that to try to take first place, which they should be if they're trying to take first. 
Um, personally, like I said, I'm going for top 10 because I just want some gold heads. I, I don't really care about getting the 20 at this point simply because I am realistic and I know I'm not going to, but if I can get eight gold heads, I'll be more than happy to achieve that. But if you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what place you guys got following this guide. I hope a couple of you guys get first place because because this is the best guide that you can possibly follow for this event. Hope it does really well for you guys. Have a great rest of your day.